So we got another awesome pocket bike from Amazon. This thing is beautiful. It's the perfect size. It's the perfect color, hot pink like Sendy. Uh, but it's just as slow as the other one, maybe even slower. So we're about to give it a mad power upgrade, we think, and uh, convert it to electric. This is an electric chainsaw, and we're gonna use it to cut down this tree, and then we're gonna put it in the uh, pocket bike and see if it works for the powertrain. She's a leaning. Well, I think it can power a pocket bike. I think so. This thing has a lot of torque for a saw this small. <laughs> She's gonna be a torque monster. Wheelies are gonna be no problem. Both of these things are extremely light. But uh, yeah, time to go put them together. Head back to the garage and start disassembling things as we do. That's full throttle. So full throttle is literally a slow walking speed. So we got some work to do. All right, time to take this thing apart and put that chainsaw in it. We're gonna take a quick break to talk about the sponsor of this video, Cove. And this is the Cove Commuter 2 that they just got back in stock. It's super easy to connect to Bluetooth and get blasting. And it's super loud, check this out. And the best part is, splits in two. One upstairs, one downstairs, spread them out throughout your kitchen, your garage, you got surround sound, you're totally good to go. And when they're combined, they give you this cool 360 stereo sound. It's like getting two speakers for the price of one and you can run them up to seven hours on one battery. It's crazy. And the best part is they're giving Grindhard fans 68% off. So click the link in the description and use code GRIND68 and you'll get 68% off. So it fits pretty nicely in there. Um, if you took the oil tank off, it actually would pretty much fit the way that it is in there because there's no more gas tank that has to go here, which I was thinking about that. That's so exciting to not need a gas tank. It's amazing. <laughs> Before I start chopping up the chainsaw in a, you know, irreparable way, uh, I want to make sure that it's going to have somewhere in the neighborhood of the right torque and RPMs. So time for our first uh, torque test here to find out whether we need gear reduction. And uh, I just tacked the regular chain sprocket to the outside of the chainsaw sprocket. And uh, we'll see. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's safe to say if we didn't do a gear reduction, it would be very fast top speed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a lovely sound. <laughs> that's pretty awesome actually. chainsaw part to kind of see what it looked like inside and it's all really quite simple and self-contained 
So um, we'll probably just not use any of the plastic cases of it because they really don't serve much purpose. Um, all this stuff looks pretty well, you know, waterproofed and we can do a little more to waterproof it. But um, yeah, let's, uh, let's plug it in and spin it up. That thing rips. It also moves a lot of air. Sweet. And we got a little speed controller, our little throttle, which for the first couple of test rides, we can just hook, put this on the uh, on the handlebar, and you can just push it with your thumb. <laughs> yeah, this is just the uh, this is the switch that kills the motor for the like safety mechanism on the chainsaw, so we don't need that. And uh, also, if we do it this way, instead of putting it all with the whole chainsaw thing in there, then we uh, don't need uh, we can save all that weight, a whole bunch of weight reduction. So that's a bonus. And now I'm going to see how to how I'm going to get this reduction adapted to this, and um, then we'll start looking at mounting it up in there. I've got a plan to adapt this motor to this gearbox. Uh, basically, I'm just gonna take these two sleeves that have the flat sides on them, weld them together so it's longer, and use that as a coupler from this shaft to that one, which I've ground down to be also flat on two sides. So it'll go like this, and then this little piece here will be a coupler. Just got this bolt here to hold them aligned while I weld them, and then, uh, then we'll have a coupler. So uh, I got the little coupler made to attach the drive motor to the gearbox. And now I'm working on the adapter plate to bolt the two together. So starting with a piece of this quarter inch thick aluminum with this bolt pattern on it. Got my two plates here to make the uh, spacer adapter and I wanted to use all six holes available on this for mounting for most for maximum strength. Without like a 3D scanner or a lot of measuring, the easiest way that I could come up with to mark the location of these three holes, because they're lower down, is I made these three bolts that are pointy on top. I just ground them down on the uh, bench grinder and made them pointy. And then I just took this and bolted it down tight, which marked the exact position of those three holes. And now I've got a center punch mark to uh, drill them. There's still a bit of finish work to do. I left the big plate here extra big so I can use it to mount this whole thing to the chassis. Um, and I still have to weld this little, the smaller plate to the bigger plate, but it's all bolted together right now. And I have it hooked up to the battery and the speed controller. And it goes vroom vroom. It's a good bit of gear reduction. Now all we gotta do is uh, throw a sprocket on here. Got a good reduction going on. Three to one. It's not gonna be the fastest pocket bike ever, but it's gonna be a little torque monster. Oh yeah.
100% mount mounted, but uh, we've got three solid mount points bolted to this and welded to the chassis. <laughs> oh, I think that'll go. <laughs> what is this madness? I missed one day and we got a chainsaw bite. <laughs> <laughs> All of the weight on here. Oh, that is dramatically more torque than it had. Yes. Before you had to sit on it for like a minute before it would move. And that's with a soft start. No brakes. <laughs> this is gonna be great. I'm gonna use the cable throttle as it is to pull uh, this trigger here. So I'll just hook it up so it pulls straight on that. Uh, so I'm just gonna cut out this chunk of the chainsaw body and um, I'm gonna try to cut it out in such a way that I can also use the battery clip part of it. I took this little clip end thingy off of the carburetor where, where uh, this cable originally attached to, and I just drilled a hole in the side of the trigger here and put the clip back on so that can pivot as it pulls up for a nice smooth action. That nut will get squished right in there, and then the other half goes on. Got the battery in there, and you should be able to pull this out with the fairing in place which is a key thing because it's gonna need to be swapped out pretty frequently. So that's ideal. Clicks in there nice and uh... away she goes. Tire gets sticky quick. Time for the first pull. Oh, yeah. That's Grindhard's first EV build, and it's a great success. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's dramatically quicker than it was with the gas engine, so that's a solid win. And uh, I mean, it goes up hills with my weight on it, so you know that's more than can be said for it before. In the mud too. In the mud, yeah. It's time to answer the question. I'm sure you're all asking, can it wheelie though? It wheelies. Oh yeah, it wheelies. I mean, it's a little hard to control because this thing's throttle is um, kind of an on off switch more than it is a variable thing. Like it has a soft start, so it doesn't just go to 100% instantly. But if you let off, it just like uh, shuts off instantly. So it's really hard to feather the throttle and hold a wheelie, but you know, you can get a little one going. Road test right here. We're hushing. <laughs> Ow. Face first into the mud puddle. Ow. Did you catch yourself on your wrist, Matt? <laughs> yeah, that's the same wrist I messed up a few months ago. Oh. <laughs> what stopped you? I don't even the see. The throttle. 
Every time you hit a bump, it like overloads the motor and shuts it off. Well, uh, this thing's pretty dang good, but um, our conditions here are terrible for it. So next episode, we'll take it to our friend's parking lot, set up some cones and do some uh, stunts and whatever we can do with it. We'll take Sandy out there, you know, have a grand old time. So stay tuned for that. And um, this was our first, like, uh, our first attempt at an electric vehicle, and it was a lot of fun. So we got some plans for more electric vehicles in the future, so... Yeah, it's going to be a good time.